as always, I think just to begin with, it makes sense just to quickly explain a little bit more about myself and what we're trying to achieve here. Um, so if you've been watching before, um, you might already know me, but for those that don't, um, my name is Jack. I'm a specialist IT recruiter for uh, MCS Group operating across the GB market. Um, I suppose our ultimate goal uh, has always to, uh, been to become you know, really embedded within the, I suppose, the communities that uh, we operate in, um, in every geography, whether that be the south of England, you know, USA, Ireland, uh, or, or Northern Ireland. Uh, we love to get involved and, and, and really support the tech community. Uh, one of the best ways that we do that is by telling the story of some of the uh, most successful uh, and high potential companies and clients. Um, so today uh, we've got Paul Cooper, who is the uh, Vice President of Engineering at Zeta Networks, who has agreed to uh, hop on with me. So I suppose, firstly, um, Paul, thanks for, for joining me. It's great to have you on. Hey, welcome. Hi, Jack. <laughs> Good stuff. Um, I suppose, Jack, just to kick us off, Paul, could, I mean, could you tell me a little bit more about the background of, of your company, what you guys do, and then I suppose, you know, your, your story as an individual as well? Sure. Yeah, sure. So we, um, Zeta Networks Limited uh, was formed in 2015, so we've been around for a while, actually. However, we are still a very much a startup company. Uh, we exist in uh, the... Bristol Tech Hub in the engine shed uh, down at Temple Meads. So, so we're centrally in Bristol, right in the heart of the, the technology area. Um, we've, we we uh, started out as a technology company looking at SD-WAN automation, which is uh, related to transmission and how those devices were uh, connected and the, the data passed, passing through them and the control of those data flows. Um, we did that for uh, two or three years, and uh, then uh, then it, 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 the market was a little uh, shaky. So we've, we've diversified a bit, and we uh, look more at the connectivity across different technologies and creating a single pane of glass view for people. So you can see your LAN switches, your Wi-Fi, and your cellular networks if you've got one, all in one, all in one place. Because at the moment, if you go out and buy those solutions individually you're going to get different uh, management systems with each solution. And that can be quite complicated to manage uh, the network from a change perspective. If you want to uh, change the connectivity, for example, you'd have to go to three different systems to do that. Or if you've got a problem in the network, actually knowing where that problem is, uh, it can lead to a lot of uh, time spent saying, well, is it on this system or is it on that system? Is it somewhere in between? Those, those sort of challenges need to be uh, uh, looked at. So uh, around about 2020, uh, we got involved in a uh, uh, major uh, UK investment in 5G, uh, a program called 5G Encode, where we looked at uh, Industry 4 and uh, automation and digitalization of manufacturing processes. And that was done in Bristol uh, with a number of collaborators, which was an exciting project, was quite a big one, around about £9 million. And we led that one through from inception to completion. And that included putting in place one of the UK's first uh, standalone uh, 5G OAN solutions uh, in, in, a, in a factory premises in Bristol. So it was a quite an exciting project, that one. Um, that we, 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 what we do is um, we integrated that with the LAN system and uh, obviously it was a 5G cellular system. But we can also do uh, some Wi-Fi uh, as well. So if you want to uh, connect services, for example, in a stadium between your 5G, your local 5G uh, in the in the stadium with your Wi-Fi in the stadium and and the all the back 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 end infrastructure to manage traffic. So things like uh, point of sale, tills, that sort of stuff. That that traffic. Then you've got video surveillance cameras uh, for security. Also, if you're in a stadium environment, you might have um, football. Uh, video, uh, so I can't remember what the term is, where you're looking at the white lines and detecting whether the ball uh, is VAR. VAR, thank you, Jack. Mm. Um, so those sort of things. Um, and you'd want to dedicate a uh, certain uh, bandwidth of your network to each of those functions, so splitting out those services. So right now, when you put a network together, you just have one big base layer of transmission. It says, right, I'll click everything to get everything, and we'll just share it all out and hope. That's OK in many environments. But in a stadium, for example, which is a good, a good example, actually, if you suddenly load 30,000 people into the stadium and they all start mm -hmm. using Facebook and other social media platforms, then the, the, that bandwidth will get very quickly consumed by those uh, uh, people in the, in, in watching, the, watching the event. Uh, that could be bad and, and compromise your security, for example, if you're reliant on the network to also 
uh, past security uh, camera feeds through to our central server where you've got the team mm -hmm. looking out for incidents that might be starting or ongoing in that environment. So what you want to do is make sure that the critical services are connected using different uh, layers or different parts of the network so that uh, they're separated from the less critical services. Not saying that no one's important, just saying that you want to make sure that the services you really, really need to keep everybody safe are have, have had some dedicated bandwidth. To do that, you want to uh, create virtual private networks across your technologies. So that would include in your Wi-Fi layer, in your cellular layer, and in your uh, LAN infrastructure. And if you're uh, doing that, then you need to be able to see them all uh, and uh, be able to, really, you want to simplify that process so you can just say, look, I want to put, set up a security service mm -hmm. and it needs to connect these ports or this, this, uh, these, these devices on our Wi-Fi or cellular to this uh, analytic server. And uh, our solutions enable you to do that. Um, and they keep, it, they keep it very simple. You just literally say, I want to connect X to Y and, uh, and I want to give it a certain latency and a certain bandwidth, and then you let Zeta's solution go off and uh, design the design the connection across the network, and then apply those changes to each of the devices that would be included in the design. Okay, great. So that's what now we I know do. why. Uh, yeah, now I know why. Whenever I visit Manchester United and go to Old Trafford, I can never get any any signal on my phone and can't get through to anybody. Well, that's um, right. So they'll they'll have their security services and TIL services separated away from public yeah. traffic. Then you are sharing it with everybody else in the stadium. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and there are that's limits, right. of course. Um, you can you can apply more. Uh, you can put more devices up and turn them on when there are more people in the stadium. But there are some physical limits, and when you put thirty or forty thousand people in one place or hundred thousand, inevitably you're going to experience some delays mm -hmm. uh, at, at, at the current uh, state of maturity of equipment and uh, our network providers today. Okay, great, and uh, thanks for that uh, that overview. Um, in terms of you, you might have already touched on this a little bit, but uh, in in short, what would you say would be the sort of main USPs of your company? Our main USPs are to put all the devices that you need to manage the connectivity of your network into one uh, view, one single pane of glass view, and be able to manage those devices, uh, see the performance of them, so you can assure the service, and ultimately. We're moving towards some uh, future future ideas where we can uh, use machine learning to forecast when we see bottlenecks in the devices and start moving traffic around in the network so it, uh, we can minimize uh, the congestion uh, impacts. Okay, great. Um, in terms of then, um, I suppose maybe you know even in house in, in Zeta, you know what are types types of technologies and stuff, uh, and maybe projects that you guys work on within your team, or, or perhaps I like you've touched on there in the future. What what will you be working on? Yeah, so we so we we build a we, our platforms um, a Java stack effectively. Um, it's a microservices architecture. It's modern, so we're using Java 11 and uh, yeah. modern technique, more modern, more modern microservices approach. Uh, we stick it on. Oh, sorry, stick it's a bad term. We uh, we deploy onto <laughs> uh, a, cl a cloud environment. So our preferred cloud today is AWS. Uh, we use the serverless compute where we can, so we're not uh, running EC2 instances, for example, because they get rather complicated to manage quite quickly. We we tend to use the uh, elastic uh, elasticness of the AWS environment. Um, that that means that uh, customers have an option to buy a cloud-based solution, or if they are uh, really concerned about security and other controls that we can put onto their local uh, uh, cloud environment or onto bare metal if, if absolutely necessary. Okay, fantastic, great. Um, what about in terms of then, you, again, you, you touched on it a bit there, what are the future plans? And um, if you can touch on maybe some of the challenges that you've particularly faced or you might face you know, along the way. Well, I think you, you, you captured it quite uh, well when you said in the stadium you have trouble co with connectivity. Um, for sure, there are physical limits on what connectivity can and cannot do in, in many environments, railway stations, hospitals, stadiums, uh, city centres, all sorts of places. Um, however, equipment's typically over-provisioned and often not fully utilised. So you can actually drive more utilisation of your equipment if you can route your traffic and data connections uh, in a better way. It may not be the shortest path. You might need to send it around a few steps, but in terms of user experience, that makes no difference. I mean, you, you're in the nanoseconds of transmission, mm -hmm. so um, 
uh, we, 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 we think that there's a, a, a future for intelligent uh, connectivity management, and that would be driven by having some training data sets on what's going on today, and then you use your AI to start forecasting when things might go wrong or, or, or congestion might occur, and then you can start adapting the network. So we've built the adaptive layer so we can know how to change things. We don't, we're, now, we're now starting to look at uh, how to you, uh, intelligently uh, manage a network, uh, independent of user interaction. Okay. Using AI for the better then? Like uh, the, yeah, the yeah. Uh, AI, AI is, is a very hot topic at the moment, yeah. and for sure there are malicious uses of it, which we can discuss over a coffee at some point. But yeah. probably not on video because it might give people <laughs> bad ideas. So sorry. <laughs> um, perfect, um, Mr. Like, final thing for me, um, like you mentioned, look, uh, Zeta very much still sort of in, in that startup phase. But you know, what advice would you give to a person looking to start their own company up uh, and in the same sort of um, position as, as you guys currently? Uh, customer, customer, and customer. That is absolutely critical when you are a startup. You need to have a, a customer and, and, that, and know what that customer needs so you can build a solution that fits a gap in, in that uh, and, and fulfills the need for that customer. Uh, don't try and invent something that you think might be needed. Build something that somebody actually needs. Would be my experience. <laughs> Uh, look, aside from that, look, I suppose just want to thank you for, for taking the time today and for, for sharing some really valuable insights into Zeta, how you guys are, are operating. Um, look, what I'm going to do is also I'm going to t obviously tag the, the company and yourself um, as well as a link to, to your website for anybody that wants to check out what you guys do as well. Um, but yeah, look, aside from that, thanks very much. Thank you, Jack. Cheers.